Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's Charles here from Charles N Photography. Today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to photograph the Milky Way in suburbia. Now, please understand, this is not going to be the same as if you're photographing the Milky Way way out in the countryside. For me here, uh, I live in Kalanga on the north side of Brisbane, about 25 k's, 25 kilometers north of Brisbane. I normally go and shoot the Milky Way either around Lake Somerset, which is about an hour's drive northwest of here, or normally down in the Scenic Rim, which is close to about a two hour drive from here. And down there in the Scenic Rim, we don't need any app or anything like that to find the Milky Way. When it's night time, when there's no moon out, we can see the Milky Way right in front of us. But in suburbia, we don't have that privilege. And I want to show you that even with everything that's going on in Australia at the moment, we are stuck at home. It's very frustrating and as photographers, we're trying to find things to do. Now, a few nights ago, I was editing a YouTube video and it got to around 11 o'clock. Uh, I just stuck my head outside just for a bit of fresh air and I looked out and we had clear skies. So I thought, what better way to actually try to photograph the Milky Way from my own backyard? I grabbed all my gear, came out here and I used an app on my phone called PhotoPills. Now PhotoPills is a great app because it lets you see the Milky Way and not only see it in real time, you can actually use this app during the daytime if you find a location and you're wondering where the Milky Way could be at any given point during the year. So you could actually say, okay, well, for example, you find a place and you, you drive there at this time of the year in early April you actually want to be going there, let's say on holidays in August. You're thinking like, where is the Milky Way going to be in an August? And is this spot that I found, like an old house or something like that, is it going to be worth all the effort to actually photograph the Milky Way? And this is where this app is great. Because what happens is, when you click on this app and you click on the night AR mode, you can actually hold it up against the sky in daylight and choose the date that you want. So let's say you are there on the 10th of August, you could select the 10th of August, see at nighttime where the Milky Way is, because you have to understand that the Milky Way is like the sun and the moon. An old wives tale was that the sun rises from the east and sets in the west. Now that is only true for two times a year. The rest of the time it tracks, and here in southeast Queensland, we actually see the sun track from southeast in summertime all the way to northeast in wintertime and it does the same when it's setting so so if you're thinking that right east is in this direction the sun's going to come up from there well it mightn't come up from there it might be in southeast or anywhere in between between southeast and northeast so this app is a very good tool to use and it's something that i use all the time when i'm planning a milky way trip or if I'm going to a new location, I'm thinking like, is this place worthwhile to actually shoot the Milky Way? And what time of the year would actually be best to photograph it? So normally when I'm photographing the Milky Way away from the city, I use this filter. It's actually a Hader clear night filter. And what this filter does, it actually looks very similar to a polarizer, but what this filter does is it cuts out the light pollution all that orange glow that you see in the night sky. Now, being in the suburbs, there's a lot of light pollution around. And on Friday night, when I came out here and I took a test shot, I couldn't see anything. There was just so much orange glow in the sky. But once I put on my night filter, the sky went blue because this filter cut down all the light pollution. Not only does it cut down light pollution, but it actually reduces your exposure. You actually lose about one stop, one EV of light. It's not a big deal for what it actually does. I will put this on my camera. Now, I'll swing the camera around. For those who don't know, this is my go-to camera all the time now. It's a Nikon D7500, and my go-to lens for either landscape or astro is the Tekina 11-20 f2.8 lens. Now, Tekina bring out two of these lenses. They have the Tekina 11-16 version 2 or the Tekina 11-20. There's only one version, it's fairly new. The 11-16mm f2.8 has a 77mm front diameter. The 
Tekina 11 to 20 has an 82 mil. It also has much better optics and you actually pay a couple of hundred dollars more for it. If you're after a lens, I would definitely say save up the couple of extra hundred dollars because you will find this lens, the 11 to 20, is so much better than the 11 to 16. I'll lock it in. So normally this filter is on this lens when I go out at night. Now one thing I tell people is unless I'm using slot filters on my camera, I always use my lens hood. It doesn't matter where I am, whether it's for astro or if I'm shooting just here at home if i don't have slot filters on my lens hood comes on because even at night what the lens hood does is it stops light coming in from stray angles and it also stops like wind so dust and all that doesn't get on and in winter time it can be very partial to low humidity and a bit of dew a bit of moisture so having the lens hood on there actually stops that moisture hitting the front of the element of the camera We'll swig it around. The way the camera is set up, this is how I normally shoot Astro. But like I said, on Friday night, I had to use the clear night filter here. So this is how I use it. I normally have the clear night filter on. But even with the clear night filter on, when I went to take a photo, all the light pollution was gone. But then I faced my second hurdle because being in suburbia, I've got next door neighbors and there's a street about 50 meters away from me with a very big street light just behind me. This street light was casting a glow across the top of the next door neighbor's house. And with that, and also a bit of the ambient light from around our suburb, the foreground was too bright. Thinking outside the square, I actually grabbed my Nissi three-stop ND medium grad. So I grabbed this filter. Now, medium grad filters are normally used when you're out and about to control a very bright sky with a darker foreground. For example, if you're around the city and all that, the sun setting behind the buildings is very dark in the front of you. So you put on an ND filter like this, a grad filter. So you're controlling the very bright sky and you can actually up your exposure then to actually lift your shadows. So instead of lifting it like this, installing it, I actually rotated it around the other way. This meant that all this bright area down the bottom in my foreground, I was able to neutralize, to darken it, to actually balance out against the darker sky. Because here, the sky is not dark, so I actually had to put this on. So now we'll actually install this onto the camera. So I take off the lens hood. So I use the Nissi V5 system holder. Now this one normally comes with an inbuilt polarizer, but I've also got just a plain spacer ring, an 82 millimeter spacer ring. So we screw that on top in front of the lens here. Now I'll actually put the filter on first, because I've got a very good idea of where it has to be. About there, we fit it all on. Now I use live view, and this gives me a very good idea of where the filter should be, which is about here. The way I can actually know where my filter should be was that I'd actually, before I took this, I actually took a test shot without a filter on and I compare both images to see where the, the filter should be. Now on Friday night, it was fairly easy for me because I just put it down low and I kept lifting it up until all my foreground light was actually gone and the, the image looked very balanced. So this is the setup I had. Now, I was shooting at around ISO 2000, but when I started to get a very quick exposure and to see where I had to line up the Milky Way, I set it to ISO 6000, f2.8, and it was only about five or six seconds exposure. I took a couple of quick shots until I had actually lined up the Milky Way correctly. Then I actually dropped my ISO down to ISO 2000. But the reason I did this is because I set the shutter speed to 15 seconds. So I wanted around 15 seconds because this would give me a very low ISO. I was shooting at around 15 mils. And if I went longer than 15 seconds, I would actually start getting star trails. So I was stuck at 15 seconds. I set at 15 seconds and then I kept dropping the ISO until the image looked good. I didn't want a too dark image, but I didn't want it too bright either. So 
it end up being 15 seconds, F2.8, ISO 2000. Now in the white balance, I like shooting what I see is what I get. So I shoot in manual white balance. My camera gives me the ability to do that. Normally for nighttime shots without the clear night filter, I normally set it for 3,800 kelvins. This gives me a very good color definition at night. If your camera doesn't have a manual white balance setting, you can actually shoot, it is either in incandescent or tungsten, which will give you a very bluish image, or in fluoro. If you're using a clear night filter like this, whether it's from Hada or Nissi, you will find that because this filter has got a bluish tinge to it, it will cool down the image a lot. So instead of shooting at 3,800, I had to increase my white balance to 4,600. And this gave me a bit of warmth in the sky because we're shooting in suburbia and there is warmth in the sky. So I didn't want it to look unnatural. And this is the key to all my photography and to yours as well when you're taking photos, try to shoot naturally colored images. If the sky's not blue, don't make it blue. A lot of people like have, for Astro, like the photo is way too blue. There is a lot of color in the sky, even at nighttime. So think about that when you're actually taking some photos. So now I was all set up. Now we go into photo pills. Now you'll actually see what I'm doing in this app. This is when we start photo pills, right? So the first thing we do is we click on photo pills and when the screen comes up, we have three sets of menus on the top. We have my stuff, pills and academy. What we want is pills, which is the one that comes up. We keep scrolling down until we get to the night AR mode. And this is the mode we want. The reason being is night AR is the overlay mode. So we click on night AR. If I just hold up the phone like that, you can actually see even at this time of the night, it's about 17 minutes past five. I can already see that there's a little bit of the Milky Way starting to show. The core is still below the horizon, but it's there already. But what we need to do is because I took the photos on Friday night, and you'll see these photos at the end of this video, we click on settings. We want the date, and it normally comes up with current date and time. We don't want that, so we unclick it, and now we select we're the sixth at the moment, we want the third. And the time, I was actually out here at 11.30 p.m. We scroll down to 11.30 p.m. We click OK, click OK. We get out of settings and there it is. I can actually see the Milky Way right there. So now what I'll do is I'll actually just clip the phone to the camera so that you guys will get a very good idea of what I was actually seeing. Now, the Milky Way at this time of the year rises around the east. As the year progresses, it actually swings around. So if it's rising from the east at the moment, it's going from east to west, arcing towards the south. And as it slowly rises, it comes up. As the year progresses, the Milky Way actually moves further to the south. By the time October, like late September, October comes around, it's actually facing westwards. There was a place I used to go to, Lake Mugra, and around late September, it was a great place to photograph the Milky Way because the Milky Way was low in the sky and it would actually arc over the lake. And it was a beautiful place either to take a beautiful pano of the Milky Way or a very nice time lapse has the Milky Way moved along the sky and set over the western horizon. On my YouTube channel, I'll actually put a link that I've actually shot about three hour time lapse one night, a motion time lapse, and I was actually tracking the Milky Way as it was actually setting across Lake Mugra. If you want to watch that, at the end of the video, I'll actually put the link in. We can actually see this is actually what I was actually looking at. Now, at the moment, it's showing me this, but like I said, the Milky Way moves. So where would it be, let's say, in just a month's time. If we click settings, we click, we don't want the current date. And let's say we want in one month. So May, we're the sixth, so we click May the sixth, and we'll click on, let's say 9.30 p.m., okay? Okay, we go okay. 
okay back now one thing you have to understand and i should mention is that as the year progresses now we call this the milky way season between late february early march till end of october this is when the core of the milky way is visible the whole milky way is actually visible part of it is visible all year round but what astrophotographers like to photograph the core is only visible between late february and october after that it actually is over the horizon and we only get the leftover of the milky way where there's not a lot of stars and it's very hard to actually see now you can actually see that the milky way has moved it is no longer where it should be it's actually tracked a little bit because as the year progresses this is what it will do it will just slowly move around now if we go back the time is set to now 5 22 pm i can just see a little bit of the milky way now if i use my finger and grab on one of these little blue circles and scroll downwards you'll actually see that the time starts moving we're now at 9 10 o'clock 11 o'clock and you can see that the milky way has moved and now at 3 a.m it is not visible anymore where is it well i have to tilt the screen all the way up and there it is way up just about vertical in the sky that is because like i told you it moves around it's just like the sun and the moon it rises and sets this is what i tell people be very careful when you're planning stuff because don't think that oh okay i came out here a month ago and the milky way rose at 11 o'clock at night you come a month later the milky way will not rise at 11 it'll actually have risen much earlier but also it won't rise from the same location it'll actually have moved a little bit this has also have to be thought out as well now when i'm actually planning a trip and i'm using it at home I actually like using this app. I just sit it in a phone holder and sit it on my desk. You can get other apps that are free, but they're very limited. So I believe like for a few dollars, a cup of coffee really, these apps are just well worth your while. In the next few days, I'm actually going to be doing another YouTube video and I'll just be showing you how I use this app, PhotoPills, to plan my trip because there's a button in there that's called the planner and you can actually plan your trip. So you can actually look anywhere in the world, drop the pin on your location and you can see how the Milky Way is shaped, how it rises, where the core is going to be at any given time of the night. Stay tuned for that video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my YouTube channel down here and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.